Hi everyone. You may notice that this server looks a lot different than our regular Rare Protocol XYZ server. You can see that it's totally themed, customized, different logo, different look and feel, totally different type of content, in this case, a carbon credit marketplace. Let's dig into exactly how you can deploy one of these for yourself. So if we remember in the last video, we did a local host deployment of the system and you basically ran it locally on your computer. So in this one, we're gonna jump straight into a pre-configured cloud machine. In a future video, we'll tell you exactly how to set up all of the cloud stuff yourself. Uh, but just as a nice continuation, we'll use this pre-configured server here to totally customize your DAP to your look and feel, your UI UX, your branding, and then can do a totally different use case. So in this case, something like a NFT uh, carbon credit marketplace. So how do we do that? If you remember in the very last step of the last video, we gave ourselves super administrator credentials. We minted that NFT. If you remember here, we went into this server, minted the access NFT, which then gave us this menu here. So let's dig in to all of these awesome server settings that we have to totally configure, totally customize your your user's experience so you can read through most of these yourself i'm not going to bore you with every single every single little feature and sub feature but we can see here that we have all of these different configurations which which featured collection do we want to feature on the home page where do we want the royalties sent to when people buy and sell assets in our marketplace what blockchains do we want to sync with or not sync with? And you can see all of the ones we've currently integrated here. We actually have a few more in the pipeline, including Core DAO, which is exciting. But the very latest one that we integrated was Base. So everything is fully working on OP stack. You can see over here, they've got a couple of 0x addresses that are super admins. If you remember from the last video, the very first time you deploy the system, the first address that logs in will automatically be granted super admin credentials. If you want to come in here and add other people as super administrators or even delete them, be very careful, but you can do that all here. And then you can totally customize the look and feel of the server. Although, also watch out because you can make some pretty garish, pretty ugly uh, versions of the server if you want. <laughs> like I wouldn't necessarily go live with the fully red uh, version. If you ever want to uh, go back to the default here, you can just reset the server. And that will actually reset the thing with the default colors that we have over here and the original system. So let me go ahead and uh, set those back to the nice green kind of eco, eco carbon credit theming. Awesome. So now you can see that the buttons look all cool and faded again. So we're going to do a bunch of on-chain work uh, today. I won't go through all of these settings, how you set the footer, even legal info, all of these kind of nice Squarespace-like things, adding and removing categories, etc. You can play with those on your own. Let's not waste any time and jump straight into the on-chain on chain interaction piece. So we're gonna go over here to the factory. This allows us to deploy smart contracts. And what you'll need is some of our rare tokens on whatever EVM you are deploying to. Uh, so in this case, base or these other ones, we have equivalent rare tokens for each one. So please reach out, we will send you a few test ones. And then you can deploy all of our smart contracts uh, that way. So we're going to deploy a brand new smart contract from scratch today using this theming over here, using this metadata. I'll also explain how our metadata system works. So we need to come up with a clever name for our factory. So the core smart contracting system that's going to run these, these carbon credits. So let's go and make something clever. So in this case, we have three types of NFTs that we are trying to make. And we can actually see what the raw images look like over here on Filebase. So this is the nice IPFS provider that we use to store all of our metadata. And we'll come over here and we'll actually see that we are trying to create a, an asset, a unique identifier that people can buy and sell that is based on this. So this is a real carbon credit project in Brazil and they have these different sustainable development goals. So we're gonna to try to make a, an asset around, around this particular type, type of metadata. Uh, so to do that, we need to know what we wanna make first. So we will go here and we will call this contract regenerate, region agriculture. It can be anything, uh, but this will be what shows up on chain. Uh, so, so make sure to pick pick something good and spell it properly. Also, it's quite difficult on chain to update and and rename 
rename things. Sometimes you can do that, but also sometimes it's hard coded uh, forever. So that be careful before you hit the button that you have spelled things correctly. So let's go ahead and deploy that. There's gonna be a bunch of on-chain interactions that are happening here. Also, you'll notice that I logged into this system with the MetaMask flow and not the AA flow. As awesome as account abstraction is, it's really much more of an end user experience for the bigger deployment flows. You definitely wanna have MetaMask. You definitely wanna do this in a full kind of MetaMask non-custodial way so that you have full control over all of our tools. We'll just walk you through a bunch of interactions here. We'll set an approval here that allow us to transfer the rare tokens. And then the second one, all of these are gonna be, because they're on the base blockchain, the penny or less, very affordable gas-wise, we've now approved a spending cap of 15 of our rare tokens. Now we will send them to the smart contract to actually deploy, deploy the factory. So this is a really cool and clever use of tokens that you effectively need them to fire our on-chain interactions. So we'll see here, boom, the contract is deployed. So let's go look at all of the things that we've deployed to this server. <clears throat> You'll actually see that we've done a bunch of test, bunch of test stuff here before. They'll all just show up sequentially. Let's go down and check out this thing that we just deployed called regen agriculture. All right, inside of a factory, we can make as many collections as we want. In this case, we'll just make one collection, but you can really mix and match and subdivide into any complexity of, of hierarchy that you want. This is what's going to actually show up in the marketplace. So we want to have a clever, clever name for it. So we can see that the actual project itself is called the Sierra project in Brazil. So we will name this thing Sierra region. That'll be the name of the collection. And then how many NFTs do we want to create? Let's go ahead and create a thousand of them. We can always create more in the future by adding new collections onto this one, but we'll just make a thousand. You'll notice this flow is very familiar. You're just basically going to be signing a bunch of transactions and doing a bunch of activity on chain. So again, the more familiar you can be with the MetaMask flow, the better this part will go. Although again, your end users won't really care. They can just use an account abstracted wallet to, to buy these things. All right, so let's go in and see that collection that we just created. Right here is where we can add the nice banner to the collection if we want, and just skip that for now though. So let's go into the collection, and we'll see this whole interesting kind of sophisticated flow in which we can create our assets. We can actually subdivide our collections into as many different price points as we want, named as many different subdivided hierarchies as we want. You know, what this looks like practically if I go over to one of our one of our existing deployed contracts. You, know, you can see here when I click the mint button, we have two different things. One that we pay the gas for the user, the other one that the user has to pay the gas themselves. That's one way to use the ranging functionality. So we're gonna go in here and we're gonna add a couple of ranges and we're gonna go over and just turn on everything. We're gonna go advanced and there's a whole bunch of stuff to fill out. For this particular use case, uh, we want to sell batches of tons of carbon. So we'd like to sell 10 tons of carbon, we'd like to sell 100 tons of carbon, we'd like to sell 1,000 uh, tons of carbon. So to do that, we're gonna make three different ranges at three different price points and have some available for this price, some available for that price, etc. So let me fill this whole thing in and you'll see what that looks like in just a second. Awesome, so this is all filled out now. We have a thousand tons, we have a hundred tons, and we have 10 tons of carbon. How did I calculate what the price of these things are? I looked over here on the reference project that we are pulling in. As an example, you can see that they're $13 a ton. We're selling these things in the minimum of 100, and, or excuse me, in a minimum of 10 tons. So what's $130 in ETH? Well, it's 0.05. So for easy example, we will just use 0.05 0.05 ETH, uh, 0.5 ETH, and then 5 ETH for the 1,000 tons. There are more sophisticated ways where we can pull price feeds directly, but I will leave that for a future video. So we're going to make a big transaction here that's going to write all three of these ranges on chain, 1,000 tons, 100 tons, and 10 tons. So let's go do that now. We'll click Create Ranges. Again, you can see that most of these transactions are around a penny quite affordable, and that will put all three of these ranges on chain that people can buy for these different price points. But let's say that we want to mint a bunch of these things to ourselves, or we want to sponsor the, the gas and have other people, other people pay for it. Let me switch to light mode here, so it's just a little bit easier a little bit easier to, to see. So what we can actually do at any time we want is we can update the range price to zero, and we can flip this 
toggle over here, that's going to trigger the Alchemy gas sponsorship flow. And now if anybody wants to buy one of these 10 tons, it's uh, totally free. So you can use this for a testing case and then you can flip it back at any other time um, that you want. So let's go put these three items up for sale on our marketplace. A couple of more transactions to do here. One is this grant roll transaction. Uh, this is a very important transaction. You'll see these a lot in OpenSea, places like that. We're giving the marketplace permission to transfer these tokens and only these tokens on our behalf. Uh, so very secure in that you are only granting the specific role to transfer these specific tokens and nothing else. So we'll grant ourselves that role and then we'll be able to publish these offers to the marketplace here. You can even check on MetaMask that it's pending and then eventually the transaction will get caught by the blockchain and then our system will go back and, and sync it and, and show up. Amazing, now all of those things are confirmed and up on the marketplace. Flipping back to dark mode here, make it a little bit easier to see. And what we'll end with in this video is exactly how metadata works. What metadata does, how do you get it? into our system. So let's actually flip over back to the regular regular homepage of the marketplace here. We should see that the collection is published. So you can see here it's called Sierra Region Ag. But there's actually nothing in here. Uh, there's no pretty, pretty images that have uh, populated the server yet. We're just going to very quickly flip back through the flow here, go find the thing that we deployed get back to this main view here, and then we'll wrap up at this step, step three here today. When you think of metadata, you think of bored apes, things like that. You've got like 10,000 monkeys, each with different images and, and, and whatever. But of course, NFTs can be much more than that. They can be imbued with anything that is valuable in the world. If you want to make an NFT into a medical record, you could go do that. You might want to hide, the, hide some of the metadata and, and keep it private, but uh, you could certainly do that or any kind of supply chain object, or in this case, any kind of carbon credit. So how did we make the metadata that we're going to populate into this? this? First, we made some nice art. <laughs> Second, we uploaded the nice art to IPFS using our partner Filebase, which is a really awesome IPFS uh, provider. So we get this nice immutable link here uh, to the metadata image that we want. Of course, we could have every image be different and unique, but to keep this simple, all the images are just going to be repeated. So then what we do, we come over to any kind of spreadsheet that you want. We like to use Google Sheets. You can use whatever spreadsheet you want. And we export a CSV file of what the individual attributes are for each NFT, what their location is, what their hash is, who made them, and then of course this handy link to the actual image itself. Uh, the CSV though is just the, the simple easy way to do it. Uh, of course you can manipulate the database directly and pull in APIs and then get a much more sophisticated production environment going, but this is just a very simple a very simple example of how to upload metadata. So what we're going to do is export file export to CSV format, this pre-populated metadata. And if you want to know the exact uh, format, of course, uh, those are all available in our documentation. And then to add metadata to our existing collection, all we need to do is come over here and go find the thing that we just downloaded, open it, and it's going to pull it into our system and then go over here to advanced. And then we're going to overwrite all token metadata, basically uploading everything in that CSV spreadsheet into our database. So you just click this one button here and then we're basically done for this video. As you can see though, the iceberg does go very deep. There's all of this pinning metadata to the blockchain directly to actually write your metadata immutably on chain, updating it, making sure that places like OpenSea can sync with it, a myriad of other interesting things that you can do. But yeah, for this video, we're basically gonna stop there, making, just to review, making a factory, making a cool collection, adding some metadata to it, and then totally configuring and customizing your nice your nice server. And we can see here that just like the initial example that I did at the beginning, we now have another brand new awesome collection. You can see up here 0x2105, the base blockchain has the has all of this nice beautiful metadata that we added to the project. And if any user wants to come in here, they can buy 100 of these for 5 ETH. They could buy 
up to 400 of these for 0.5 ETH, etc. And that can all be totally changed and modified. Uh, they could buy 30 of them if they wanted to, and that would generate a valid on-chain transaction with a nice customized buy button with this nice UI UX, and you get this beautiful end product that I'm showing here. So if that is interesting to you, please download our repo today directly from our GitHub and then watch our previous videos where we show you how to install the system on your own setup. Well, thank you so much for listening today, and I will catch you in the next video.